Good morning, YouTube. Today's topic comes from me asking April, hey, you want to go on a cruise? <laughs> no. And she's like, no. <laughs> no. And I'm going to come up with a video to tell you all the reasons why <laughs> I don't want to go cruising. So April has never cruised. Why is that? I just, I feel like when you're stuck, you're, com you're confined in this like tiny area, even though cruise ships are like massive cities on the water, I still feel like I would be perhaps claustrophobic, but I don't, I've never done it, so I don't want to say it. But also the motion sickness, like I feel like that's my worst nightmare. The worst feeling you've ever had. They have stuff for no, that. Right before you're going to throw up, I literally feel like that yes. is the worst thing that the human body can experience is that like 10 seconds when your mouth is just watering and you really don't want to and you're trying not to, unless you're drunk, then it might be safer to do it then. But it's like the worst feeling. Imagine being stuck on a ship, feeling that constantly over and over again. That's... My dad tells that story on their honeymoon because they went on a cruise and he got seasick and my mom thought it was funny. So there was like a <laughs> sardine or a fish that he started waving <gasps> in no. front of him, sardines from the salad or something no. when he's about to throw up. And it was like, I just married this woman and she's evil. <laughs> but <laughs> That's a good way to find out. <laughs> I've been on four cruises. Right. Three of them were with my grandmother, and she's oh. passed a few years ago, so mm -hmm. I haven't been on a cruise since. So right. I kind of wanted to go, but uh, I, I have this weird thing with my grandmother that sometimes April does things that <laughs> remind me of my grandma, and Which is it's fine. weird to say that. I mean, no, it's weird when I say, oh, you remind me of my grandma. And well, if I like, said, you know, you remind me of my grandfather, that would be cool. Right. Like, that would be great. But I would like to go cruising with you. Right. I guess that's something you don't have in common. Right. So you do have a lot in common with my grandma. <laughs> Like the way we kiss, you. No, but, okay, the, the <laughs> cruising is not that. I know it's weird, I'm sorry. Uh, but you are going to try and talk me out of it today with your cruising yes. mishaps, like all of the weird, terrible things that happen on cruises. Cruising nightmares. Okay, <laughs> so what are we starting with? Well, well, first, I just, I just saw this thing on the New York Post. Uh, why am I slurring? Because I took a bunch of uh, the D. Mm. Zyrtec D. It, it dried me out. Don't have a dirty mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he took the D too. Well, yeah, this spring allergies have bloomed, so <laughs> it just dries me out. It doesn't make me slur. I, I am slur well because I'm dry, maybe. Oh, yeah. I'm slurring. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I saw this on the New York Post, right? And this is was completely shocking. Dara Tucker, she posted on her TikTok that. Be warned, when the cruise ship all of a sudden makes a ton of ice cream available, sort of throwing an ice cream party more than you've ever seen, there's a specific reason for it. Because it's all free on the cruise ship, especially right. ice cream. So if they're encouraging you to have extra ice cream. Yes. This is what it means. It means more people have died on your cruise ship than their morgue can handle because there's a morgue on every cruise ship, which I understand the need for that. But yeah, well, they need old to make people take a cruise and they overexert themselves or overindulge and have a heart attack and die. So well, yeah, sure. I, I do know that people die on cruise ships. There's thousands of people on them. Well, but... and like the median age for cruise ship is 75. Whoa. So that's where also, you know, the morgue comes in. But depending okay. on the cruise ship, it could fit three people to five to seven, most being 10, I think. And right. so this case, when they're giving away frozen food like ice cream, too many people you have know, died. Too many people have died on the ship, which is just <laughs> a little eerie. That it is just... weird. So they have to make room in the food freezer for the bodies. Right. Hmm. Okay, but get this. There was in 2022, right, in August, a man died on the Celebrity Equinox, right? Yeah, Celebrity Equinox. They didn't have room for him in their morgue. They clear space in the cooler. He's there for six days. Did they accidentally cook him? No, but they didn't keep the temperature cold enough. Oh, it was so it was a refrigerator where you keep it at a temp. Right. But not enough to preserve the body, so he decomposed? So he was decomposing for six days on this cruise ship. 78-year-old man, his wife was with him, thinking, okay, you have a morgue, you're going to take care of my husband who's passed away, the love of my life. Well, she didn't get off the cruise ship. She stayed for the entire six days. I'm like, might as well finish the cruise and party, you know, or maybe that was the plan, you know? I mean, yeah. so, well, interesting, because you think you'd get off the next, next stop and go home rather than just sit on the boat for six days. That's, that's kind of her fault. That's so what, was she point. mad? She sued We don't know it? the details, but she sued them for she did. not properly storing his body. Did she get money? 
A million dollars. A million bucks. The guy right. is dead anyway. $100 okay. $100 million dollars, uh, for the negligent procedure. All right. Yes. So that, you know. So, well, I'm sorry for her loss, but she stayed on the boat for the rest of the cruise and partied and then <laughs> got a million bucks and he, I mean, he, after he had died. So. You don't know that. It's not, you don't know. Right. Okay, so this is probably the most famous one. Okay. It is called the Poop Cruise. Oh, so everything broke on the boat, right? Right, so there was an engine fire, well, fire in the engine room, which cut power to the entire ship. This was the Carnival Triumph back in 2013, right? right. So whole ship shut down. They're drifting in the Gulf of Mexico for days. Yes. Bathrooms all get backed up and the sewage starts coming up and just sleeping and just waiting in the lowest floors in the cabins. So people, they can't even sleep in their cabins. They're making makeshift tents outside because there's inches of just poop. sewage and poop just hanging around, slashing in the Gulf of Mexico with the heat and the temperature is just cooking it all. And it, did, it does talk about how if you, if you did need to go poop, because the toilets weren't working, they would give you a special poop bag that they would then store on the ship because they didn't want to throw it overboard I because see. that wouldn't be... Environmentally friendly. Environmentally friendly. Here's so. the thing about the poop cruise, the world famous poop cruise. They chose Carnival. <laughs> they chose to go on a ship where you can do like a five day or seven day cruise for two, three, four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. It's advertised all the time. Is it that cheap? It is very cheap. Wow. And you get what you pay for. You sign up for a cruise like that, Yeah. you're taking the chance of something like this happening. You just have to accept there's a chance where I will be stuck pooping in buckets and sleeping outside for a week. <laughs> and I, I don't understand how anybody could be upset because you're paying less than $1,000 to go on a week's cruise. Right. Well, they did offer everyone a refund and $500 Towards extra, the next cruise? So and like two more cruises. A free cruise additional. Oh. So okay. you could make so some money. So they were money. very much made whole. <laughs> no. Like, you cruise carnival at your own risk. I mean, come on. No, it's traumatizing and dangerous. Here's another one. Okay, so the doctors on cruise ships, they have to staff full-time doctors, right? Right. Perhaps <clears throat> they're not the best doctors, but you only have no. this pool to choose from, this one to choose from. We met a doctor with a boat on St. Croix. <laughs> Remember him? <laughs> <laughs> she had a friend that lives in St. Croix, and yes. he has a little yacht. He looked like a homeless hippie, but he was a real doctor. And Well, that wasn't my friend. It was just a random person right. that we, we met. We met this random person <laughs> at this place that we went with her friend, yeah. and they were determined to get us to come on their boat for the day. And we were like, mm, we're not coming on the boat. But he was talking about, like... I'm a doctor, and it he looked, was he looked weird. strange. And they gave me a business card with his doctor name on it and DR, and, and they really wanted us to join them on their It was like, for $80 boat. cash, I'll write you a prescription for whatever you want. Was, Did he it, say that to you? It was you? something like that. Like, <laughs> how you take care of, like, stitch people up. It was, it was just straight cash every single time, and that and he lives on his boat with his... his uh, girlfriend or whatever. Yeah. So you're saying cruise ship doctors aren't the most qualified Perhaps doctors, obviously. a little sketch. I don't want to speak yeah. out of line because I'm sure there are very qualified doctors on ships, but it's just, this is what you're stuck with. There's okay. nothing you can do. So, so somebody so had a bad experience a with a doctor? Very bad experience oh, with a dear. cruise ship doctor. Now he went to the doctor because he was having flu-like symptoms, right? Uh -huh. The doctor decides to give him a shot, which then later made his arm fall off. Yes. Oh. Now, in all the court documents, this doctor was deemed inexperienced, and obviously he was, but he gave him the wrong medicine and the wrong dose of an injection into his arm, which gave him gangrene, and his arm fell off. Well, that's sort of their fault, because it takes a lot before you lose an arm. Like, he had a shot. It got bad, and he didn't do anything about it. I don't know that. It could have just we set in a gaping hole. We don't go from a shot the arm. next day, my arm falls off. Like gangrene <laughs> takes a bit to set in. Like the penicillin, whatever. I mean, somebody just ignored it. Well, it, it was but... the Norwegian breakaway cruise. So well, Norwegian. I... I have been on Norwegian. That have is you? a very nice. Uh, did that to Alaska with Graham there when I was sixteen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, it's just like it could be a really nice, well-known cruise, and mm -hmm. you just never know what's going to happen on that. Yes. So, okay. I'll give you that. This could have been just a freak accident, mm -hmm. negligence of the patient because he wasn't paying attention to his arm. Who knows what happened? But he did sue the company and got $4.6 million. For an arm? Yeah, that's... For an arm. Mm. 
So, so this next story mm -hmm. is what makes me really nervous to go on a cruise ship because they're not aware of things that are around them. They're not paying attention. Okay. So a cruise ship, the Royal Caribbean's largest ship, Harmony of the Seas, actually stopped one of SpaceX rockets from launching. Because it got into the potential airspace of yes. like debris coming down? Yes, because they weren't paying Ooh. attention to any SOS signals and any flight path signals that they're supposed to. That would make Elon Musk very, very angry. Right. Like and a, an they, aborted launch could cost a million plus. Whoa. I'm sure it did. And it was just seconds before they decided to kill the launch because they, they had a flight path and they marked it off where any ship can't go in the ocean underneath this flight path for whatever oh. reason. And this boat's just la-di-da, like not Cruising. paying attention. And I'm like, what else aren't they paying attention to? Like, for me, that's like, dare I say, tip of the iceberg, well, where you don't know what else could go wrong. Well, that's interesting, because the Coast of Concordia is a famous shipwreck where they ran into some rocks and sank uh, because like the boat captain was showing off and going places. You would think that there's a more standardized system for cruise ships with thousands of people, like sort of similar to uh, airliners. Right. But yeah. it seems pretty loose on what mm. they can do as far as cruise ships and flying yep. or boating wherever they want. Yep. Poor hmm. Falcon 9 couldn't launch because of uh, Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Sea. Oh, well. Yeah. But it just, it just makes me think like, what else is going to happen? What else are you not paying attention to? Mm -hmm. Now, this was a big one on the Royal Caribbean Explorer of the Seas, the norovirus, which you're in like this like gigantic, but gigantic petri dish, right? And you're like, mm -hmm. you're so cute. She's a little baby. She's just a baby. Can you bring a cat on a cruise ship? That would be a, probably a really bad idea. I'm sure somebody has smuggled in a cat before. <laughs> That may be what has caused the neurovirus, because you're a disgusting little thing, you know. Oh, no, she's so. not. But so, yes, this, this virus that got a record, breaking 700 passengers violently ill, vomiting, diarrhea, upset stomach, and you are stuck what ship on was this? this ship. This is the Royal Caribbean Explorer of the Seas. Okay, Royal and Caribbean's supposed to be a little nicer. 2014. But... Yikes. Um, all the passengers got half of their fares refunded, and they were offered half off a future cruise. See, that was a very common thing even before people were paranoid about viruses and things, talking about how disgusting cruise ships were and packing all these people in and the number of people getting sick. And we were talking about that before. And then, of course, the, the coronavirus and the cruise ships right. getting like crazy cases and things. I don't know if cruises have recovered since I haven't been on a cruise since then. Yeah. But yeah, interesting. Mm, yeah, dangerous. You're mm. probably going to. These are one of the many ways that you should not. One of the many reasons you should not go on a cruise. Okay. Okay, so this one's great. The Crystal Symphony refused to dock in Miami yeah. because U.S. Marshals were going to seize the ship, right? Like the, repo it. Repo the ship. <laughs> okay. So they got detoured from Miami, didn't dock there. They went to the Bahamas. I mean, that's not a bad so what, place to what go. So what did they owe the U.S. government? <laughs> so they owed the U.S. government $4.6 million oh. in fuel charges. Oh, so that's for... a couple of big fill-ups on the cruise ship. So the creditors, they were able to seize... Right. The boat, yep. if they had docked it, mm -hmm. but like someone in a Nissan Altima that's, you know, four to six payments behind, they don't park it at home. <laughs> they park it at their friend's house yes. and walk home yes. so the car can't get re <laughs> yes. So, like, I'm not parking in Miami. I'm going to the Bahamas. Yes. <laughs> Exactly but then what happened. all the passengers on the cruise ship had to get off on the Bahamas instead they of Miami? All, yeah, so they were all stuck and stranded. Eventually they got a sort of transporter ship to take there's, them there's to Fort Lauderdale. There's worse places. They could have ended up in, you know, somewhere <laughs> terrible like in Central America and like cartels right. taking them and everything. Right. So at least it's the Bahamas, you know, you end up in I a mean, nice place. I imagine like you have this trip plan and then you have your flights scheduled around when you're docking. Right? Oh, Is that what yeah. it's called? Docking porting? Yes, I don't know. Your port of call. <clears throat> your port of call. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, I'm not there right now and you have to rearrange flights and it costs a lot of money. Right, right. But just $4.6 million. Like, how do you lose track of that payment? And how do you not know that that's going to happen? Well, they were a little behind, I suppose. They're, what year was this? They're a little behind. This was in 2022. Oh, okay. When mm. cruises were struggling, probably, to pay their bills and getting back on track. 2022. Yeah, I mean, before everything had sort of picked back up. 
right. with them. So I could see why they got a little behind on their bills. It's scary. Yeah. Yeah, Crystal Cruise Lines, the Nissan Altimas of cruises, right? <laughs> Is that what they are now? It's actually a Hong Kong company that filed oh, for bankruptcy. I see. Um, anyway, here's my like worst nightmare probably. Hmm. I probably am saying this about And this is every why you haven't cruised, this one right here. Well, I feel like I'm gonna get seasick and then just be awful, miserable the entire time. Mm -hmm. So cruise ships, they have sort of these stabilizers underneath. Yes, it's like ship. a big extension of the bow. It looks like it has a, a, a pee pee but it's underneath the water to where you can't see it and it keeps the boat from rocking. It's a it, very nice thing. It's very intense and I'm like, why do they even need to make these stabilizers? Because the ships are so top heavy. They're like skyscrapers on top of ships. Mm -hmm. Of course they're gonna tip over and be right. unstable in the sea. So in 2018, Carnival Sunshine's stabilizer malfunctions. Carnival, here we go. Right, Carnival again. Passengers are all panicking. They're rushing for life jackets and the ship is tilting to the side, plates shattering, sliding clear across the floor. Can you imagine if- uh, Sounds like fun. If it just slowly starts tilting, you're like, we're going under, we're going down. I've seen Titanic, I know what happens, and well, then the boat sucks you under right when it's about to like go down. Well, it's like the Poseidon Adventure, that movie. Yes. Gene Hackman, you know, flips all the way over, but that sounds like fun to me. I mean, no. you know, obviously they bolt the pianos down. I think I've seen some YouTube clips of this when it broke and yeah, like all the chairs and things and sliding around and passengers are hanging on to the pillars and things. Once again, you cruise carnival, you sign up for a potential adventure like that. <laughs> and that sounds better than the poop cruise. It's terrible. But okay. it does sound better than the poop cruise. Yes. Right. Okay, so here's another reason why not to take a cruise. This particular cruise, Royal Caribbean Voyager of the Sea in September of 2018. Voyager. Was, which is an amazing name for a ship, was stuck with a third of the passengers pretty much having a complete frat party. They brought burlesque girls with them. They were completely just taunting other females oh, on no. the ship. Like imagine being on the ship with your grandmother so, and you're stuck with these guys. They're from India. Uh, and they were uh, all worked for a data company based in India. Oh, so they're all letting loose because yes. they work long hours there in India. Yep. And whoa. <clears throat> they're all letting loose and you're stuck with them in these confined quarters, Oof. harassing you, who knows, just drinking, completely wasted the entire time. Yes. And you cannot escape this. Open bar or whatever, yeah. Right. All, the all-inclusive nature of some cruises. Yes is very dangerous for people. Right, they did issue refunds and apologized, um, mm. and that's about it, yeah. Yeah, well they do theme cruises, you know, of course there's the gay cruisers, but then there's the Star Trek themed cruises, <laughs> which would be very fun to go on. I'm not gonna take you on a Star Trek cruise, but uh, a bunch of nerds on a boat with the uh, actors of Star Trek, you know. It'd be fun, uh, yeah. I feel bad for the actors though. I don't think that they would cut loose and get, I mean there'd be a lot of, uh, you yeah. know, the Klingons might decide to go on a that you know, so fun. Targ hunt or something. I don't know. Whatever <laughs> they would so do. Fun. The Vulcans and their logic and things. What is it when you die when you're a Klingon? You, you go to Stovokor. Yeah, they could have like a Stovokor cruise recreation, there right? There you go. Yeah, the Barge of the Dead. They yeah. ride the Barge of the Dead. Anyway, you guys don't care. <clears throat> Check this out. This is another nightmare. This is more nightmare fuel. Don't look at my screen. Okay. I need you to be in full react mode. All right. Imagine you're getting all dressed up, okay? Like you were on the Titanic and you're going mm. out for an evening on the cruise. Rose. You're in, right. You're mm -hmm. in your beautiful tuxedo. I saw that in Nickelodeon once. <laughs> you go to the elevator and there are sheets of blood streaming down the elevator. Just so, streaming. Okay, you really want me to mentally picture it, okay. Mental picture. All right, so what, yeah. we're having our evening together. Yes. And I'm looking at the wall. Right. And there's <laughs> blood on the wall. Blood gushing down the wall. Carnival ecstasy. December Carnival, here we go. 2015, an electrician fell to his death on routine maintenance in an elevator oh. on a cruise ship. Well, that's terrible. Imagine like knowing that that's how you were gonna die one day. Like on your tombstone, like you're gonna be oh. on a cruise ship and an elevator is going to fall and kill you. Have you seen Ghost Ship, that movie? It's like one of the most epic opening sequences of all time, which we definitely can't show here because the entire crew and passengers 
are killed in the opening scene. And oh. then it's a ship that drifts for like 50 years and they find it. But the, like the opening yeah. lore is it's about the most gory, crazy thing I've ever seen. So you're enjoying dinner and there's just blood coming from a dead yeah. person. Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, carnival. You're cruising. You take a risk first. I mean, that's a story you tell your grandchildren, I suppose. Carnival cruise, yes. Last one. Mm. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm still saying, not convinced. I, oh, you're going to be convinced after this, right? Okay, Norwegian Dawn, right? Norwegian. Beautiful mm -hmm. cruise ship. Lovely. Beautiful name. Mm -hmm. um, there was a seven-story wave. Imagine how high wave. that is. A su like a tsunami. A complete tidal wave tsunami that came out of nowhere. I say out of nowhere. It obviously was some seismic that's activity Poseidon or adventure. something. Is that's that the, where the, the Poseidon comes from? Yes. Mm -hmm. It hits... This ship, this was April 2005, completely demolishes this ship. I mean, nobody got hurt. So it didn't was, tip all the way over, It didn't though. tip all the way over. But the wave swept onto the ship. 62 cabins were completely flooded. It whisked away all the whirlpools and all the furniture just Did tossed right off. Nobody died. That's a miracle. It was a complete miracle. Now get this. Four passengers were injured, but nobody died. But get this. The captain, they offered free drinks. It was his idea to offer free drinks to everyone all night. But actually 300 people left the cruise right, right when it docked because they were like they didn't want to go on with it anymore because right. it was so terrifying. Like you just survived a plane crash and here when I will fly you home I don't think a lot, a lot of people would do that. No. So I understand no. like and there's probably some drink called the tsunami that they probably like, tried to serve in bad humor or probably. something. That's not bad. I mean you'd have a like it, that's that's pretty cool. I survived a tidal wave on a cruise ship. But you don't you think that'd might, be cool to say? You might not survive it. That's They were well, lucky they to have survived it. So you have to survive disease, uh, bad, creepy doctors, crazy well, bachelor parties that April. could be hounding you. Here's the thing. I don't want to take you on carnival. Elevators. I would never, ever take you on carnival, like ever, but not even just for your first cruise. I want to take carnival you... Carnival just sounds like, like Circus Circus in Las Vegas. Like, I don't want to go there. <laughs> No, I mean, it's like going to Golden Corral and expecting gourmet or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a chance to get food poisoning. You know, our Golden Corral got transformed into a car dealership. But it, anyway, <laughs> that is what I want to take perfect. you on. It is the <gasps> wind surf. It is like a four or five masted sailing cruise ship with only 200 or so cabins. So the passengers, there's not thousands of them. There's, a, there's like couples, so under 400. So with the food, they're not serving thousands of people buffet style. Oh it's gosh. all very, very nice. They can go into little ports, little places. What? And I want to do Italy. So I like want to start in Rome, what? go around the boot of Italy and the backside, and end in Venice. How did you just become the real most romantic man in all of Kansas? <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. I did it 15 years ago with my gram there. Oh, <laughs> That's really sweet. It was on the same ship but a different place. So like uh, Monaco and things. I haven't been around to Venice before and this I wanted is... to take you there. And I thought this would be the good way to do it. I didn't know they like made men in Kansas to think this way. Ladies, if you're watching, which is like 2% of our audience. So ladies, if you're watching, there are good men in the middle of America in Kansas. Oh, but you don't want to go because no. you know, like poop and you know, no, 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 viruses no, 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 no. and the bad doctors. I'm, and... I'm going to get ready. <laughs> Seriously, we're well, gonna there go. You go. So we're really well. I canceled it because you didn't want that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. That's so cool.